Hello everyone, you are doing well. Previously we have covered a brief introduction to simulation and installing any logic. So today we are going to learn more about the agent based modeling. So what is agent based modeling? Agent based modeling is a relatively new method compared to system dynamics and discrete event modeling. In fact, Agent-based modeling was largely an academic topic until simulation practitioners began using it some 15 years ago. So it was triggered by a desire to gain deeper insights into systems that traditional modeling approaches do not capture well. Advances in modeling technology made possible by computer science such as object-oriented modeling, UMI, and statures. The rapid growth of CPU power and memory, agent-based models are more demanding than system dynamics and discrete event models. Uh, we are going to be building a model and learn more about agent-based modeling along the way. We will be building an agent-based model of a consumer market, uh, a market where each consumer will be an agent help us understand how a product enters a mar market since human decisions always include stochastics agent based modeling is ideal for modeling market simulations let's assume the following the model includes 5000 people which do not use the product but a combination of advertising and word of mouth will eventually lead them to purchase it so let's start creating the agent population. We will start by creating a simple model that depicts how advertising leads consumers to purchase our product. Our model's consumers will not use the product at first buy, but they are all potentially interested in using it. We will also represent advertising's influence on consumer demand by allowing a specific percentage of them to become interested in purchasing the product during a given day. For our purposes, advertising effectiveness will be considered a value of 0 0.1, which will be integer, determines the percentage of potential users that becomes ready to buy the product during a given day. So let's start. First, we need to open the any logic, and the this is the welcome page. The welcome page introduces you to any logic, offers a helpful review, overview of the program and these features and allows you to open the example models. So here are some tutorials you will get. If you want to learn more about these models, you can just click on them. So uh, now we are going to be closing the uh, welcome page and create a new model. For creating the new model, we are going to click on the file on the top left file. After that, we will go to new. We'll select the model. You can also just click, uh, click Ctrl plus N. We'll be naming the model Market, and our model time units will select it as days. Then we're going to click Finish. So what you see now, this is the this is what is called the AnyLogic workspace. Okay, AnyLogic workspace. The graphical editor allows you to edit the agent types diagram. So this is the graphical editor, this box right here. It will allow us to edit the agent type agent type diagram and we can add model elements dragging them from the palette onto the diagram and placing them on the editor's canvas. Elements you place inside the blue frame will appear inside the model window when you run it. So this is the palette. You can find several library, process modeling library, natural handling library, 
pedestrian, rail, road, everything is here. So, and the project view, this is the project view on the top left. Project view allows you to access any logic models you have opened in the workspace. The workspace tree helps you easily navigate them. So if you have multiple models open, all of them will pop up here. And you can just click to hide them or to show them. Okay, so this is the project view. The palette view leads the items grouped in palettes. To so add an element to your model, drag the element from the palette to the graphical uh, editor like this. So we are going to be cancelling it for now and this is the properties panel on the right side. The properties panel allows you to view and modify the selected items properties. Okay. okay. To open or close a view, choose the corresponding item from the view menu if the item is selected the corresponding view will be visible so here are some here is the view on the top right left on the third you can click on the project the project will it will be disabled if you click on it again it will be enabled okay you can also resize the view using our mouse to drag the view's edge. So this is the edge of the project. We can readjust it, resize it, and this is the edge of the properties. We are going to be readjusting them according to our screen size. We can also reset the perspective in the tools menu here. You can see the reset perspective to return the views to the default positions. Now, we will be navigating through the model in the projects view. Project view allows you to access the any logic project you have open in the workspace and you can use the workspace tree to navigate them quickly and easily. So this is the workspace tree. Any logic uses a tree structure to display your model. The top level displays the model. The level below displays agent types and experiments and the lower level branches organize the elements that make up the agent structure. Okay, I hope that is clear. So by default, a model has one agent type main so this is the default agent type main one experiment simulation and built-in database to read input data and write simulation output database empty by default so this is empty right now the run configuration element enables tuning the model's input and output prior to uploading any logic cloud. So this is the graphical editor for the main agent type. So if you cannot find an agent in the graphical editor, we can just go to the workspace tree, double click on it and you will be able to find it very easily. So this may be helpful when you cannot find an element on the graphical diagram. So let's talk about the agents. Agents are a model's building block and you can use them to model all kinds of real-world objects including organization, companies, trucks, processing stations, resources, cities, retailers, physical objects, controllers and so on. Each agent typically represents one of the model's logical section. This allows you to decompose a model into many levels of detail. Our model has one agent type, main. To add consumers, we will need to create an agent type to represent consumers. Then create an agent population made up of instances of this consumer agent type. In any logic, 
we can use this helpful new agent wizard to create agents. <clears throat> we'll be going to the palette. Here you can see. The, here is an agent palette. This is the agent palette. This is, is the agent. Okay. So what we are going to do? We are going to drag the agent element from the agent palette onto the main agent type graphical editor. I'm going to be placing it here. So a uh, pop up has opened. It says step one. Choose what you want to create. On this step one, choose what you want to create page. Select the option that best meets your need. Since we want to create multiple agents of the same type, select population of agents. So something is written here. Create a number of agents of the same type living in the same environment in the current agent. So the typical cases, people, consumers, patient, truck, projects or product. So I'm going to be clicking on the population of agents. So this is the step two. It says creating new agent type. So it says agent type name. I'll be renaming the name of my agent type to consumer. Okay. So after that, I'm going to be clicking on the next here. Here you can see step 3 agent animation. So on the step 3 agent animation page, choose the agent's animation shape. We will be picking a 2D animation of a person. So this is what you want. After selecting the 2D animation, we will be clicking on next. <coughs> on the step 4 agent parameters. Is saying please fix the parameters you want to see in your consumer so since our model considers advertising related product purchases we will add a parameter add effectiveness to define to define the percentage of potential users would become ready to buy the product during a given day Type will be double. There are several types of uh, types available. Integer, double, boolean option. So our need is double. So I'll be, I'm uh, setting it to double. Specify value or stochastic expression. And I'm going to be setting it to 0 0.01. That means 10 percent. Or 0 0.01. <coughs> So once we have set the specified value or stochastic expression, we'll be clicking on the next. So the first one, step five says population size. So this will be the total amount of population of your agent. I'm going to be starting with an agent size of 5,000. Okay. Create population with agents box. Okay. Uh, to create 5,000 instances of the consumer agent. Each instance in the population will model a uh, specific agent consumer. While we have created our agent population, we will not see 5000 person animation figures on main diagram. Instead, AnyLogic will use the 5000 agents in the population we have called consumers to simulate the market when we run our model. Okay, so this 5000 agents will not appear in our main graphical editor, but it will appear on our the new agent type we are creating, that is the consumer. Okay. So we're going to be selecting, selecting or clicking on the next step six. It says configure new environment. So this agent will live in the main agent type. The following are the environment setting. You can always change them from the properties of the main agent type, see space and network section. So space type, we're going to be setting it to continuous. The size will be 500 into 500. Uh, we want apply random layout. 
and we are going to be clicking on the finish. <clears throat> there we have our population of consumers of 5000. It is right here. Okay. So now our model has two agents type that is the main and the consumer. And it has the parameter the add effectiveness. Okay. So what is happening? Uh, this is the main. This is the graphical editor of the main agent type, and we have created an another agent type inside the main agent. So the consumers is is within the main agent. Okay, that means the main is a larger agent, and within that agent, another agent is living there. That is the consumers. So let's talk about the agent's environment the main agent acts as the environment for the consumer population as i was saying let's consider you live in a country so the country here is the main graphical editor so this is the country and the consumers living inside it is you or the population of the country i hope you are uh, you have clear knowledge on this now, clear understanding about this right now. So since the environment defines the space, layout, network and communication that our agents use, we will need an environment to arrange our agents presentation and model the word of mouth advertising that occurs when our agents interact. Okay. So well, let's click main in the projects here. On the main here you can see the space and network so this is the environment okay I'm going to be adjusting the edge so this is the properties view here you can see the select the agents you want to place in the environment so this is the environment we have placed an agent inside the environment to modify an element's properties select the element by clicking it in the graphical editor or in the project view and then use the properties view to modify the properties the properties view has several sections to expand or collapse the section click its title so these are the sections and the selected elements name and type display at the top of the view here top of the view on main diagram, select the agent populations non editable impeded animation shape. Open the advanced properties. Uh, this is the non embedded animation shape for our agent consumer. We are going to open the advanced on the properties. Okay. And select the draw agent with offset to this position option so we are going to be clicking this draw agent with offset to this position as you can see the following figure the animation shape defines the upper left corner of the 500 into 500 pixel space where the individual agents will reside when you run the model So, we have finished building this very simple model and we can now run it and observe its behavior on the toolbar. Click the build model to build the model and check for any possible errors. We can also click F7 or you can just click it over there. So here you can see the uh, on the bottom left 
there is a message build completed successfully time taken was 3.3 double seven second okay so since our build is ready we are going to be clicking on the run and click the small triangle to the right this green triangle the play symbol we know select the experiment you want to run choose market simulation we are going to be clicking on the click on this bottom arrow facing downward and click on the market simulation so it's starting I'm going to make it full screen. So, there is our agents, the 5000 agents living inside the environment. So, first let's talk about the model windows control panel. You can use the control panel at the bottom of the model window to control the model's execution. Okay, so this is the run. Uh, we can pause it from here. We can run the model from here. We can stop it. Terminate the current experiment execution. And we can also run it again. So the 5000 agents are living inside the environment in an area of 500 into 500 okay so we are ready to define the consumer's logic to continue developing our model so i will be covering that part in the next video so if you found this video helpful leave a comment like our video and subscribe to our channel and if you have any query, leave leave your comment in the comment section. I'll be glad to answer those. So thank you and have a good day.